Module three deals with uh, legal authorities and core legal research skills. And this is where we really start to lay the foundations of the skills and, and, and methodologies and ways of thinking that really um, mark lawyers out as a, a different profession and a different way of seeing the world. Law is an authoritarian system, and I mean that term quite technically, in that the system of knowledge is based on whether you have an authority to back up what you have to say. Now that's quite different, to, for instance, to science or to the humanities, where it is the strength of the argument or the truth of your argument that's important. In law, the foundation of your argument is whether you have a legal authority, a rule, um, or a precedent that backs up what you have to say. So technically in science, anyone can um, uh, solve an equation or, or discover a new phenomenon. But in law, it's really about the status of the person and their ability to then implement those rules. So everyone else is persuasive, but we, what we're really looking for is who, who is a, a lawmaker who actually has the power to back up um, what they have to say. So part of this week and um, a lot of the discussion in the textbook is about locating laws, locating authorities, locating um, legislation and uh, precedents. And um, you'll find that particularly in your foundation subjects, a lot of that work is often done for you by the textbook. Quite often um, there's extracts or summaries of the relevant provisions. But we do from time to time also ask you to go and look for the original sources. This isn't just to be sadistic or to give you more work, but it's also to start to introduce you to those skills of reading and understanding how those things work. And you can be in the position where you think you've managed to, you know, do, do, a, do a particularly good scam by getting through a law degree with doing the very minimum amount of reading and avoiding reading cases and legislation wherever possible. But the problem is the person who you fool the most is yourself because then when you end up in a practical work environment, if you find you don't have those basic skills, you're going to really struggle. And unlike the university environment where there's always someone to hold your hand and, and help you out, um, the real world is a lot more ruthless and you'll find that clients are not going to give you an extension because you've got a bit of a cold. They're not going to give you understanding because you've had a bit of a stressful week. If you um, manage to ruin your client's business because you don't know how to um, do the, proper, the foundational basic parts of research, um, they're not going to be so understanding. They're going to take their business elsewhere. The foundations of legal knowledge are rules and precedents. And these are exemplified for rules in legislation and precedents in cases. Now, what's the difference between these things? Rules are forward-looking and they're very, very general. They're expressed in the form of, from this point onwards, the rule is this and everyone follows that rule. Precedents, on the other hand, are backward-looking and they're very specific. So they look at a particular situation and they say, well, in this situation this occurred, how do the rules and the other precedents apply to that situation? Now, obviously, um, the, the, the rules of legislation prevails over case law, but you'll find as you go on that the way law builds and law evolves over time is a bit like coral. You set a rule, a whole lot of precedents come into place to interpret that and to, and to figure out the edges that are not quite as clear. And then occasionally you'll get a, a new rule created. You might get a new piece of legislation or a um, revamping of an old piece of legislation that makes those rules clear. And then the process starts all over again and you get precedents that come along and say, but what about this circumstance? This happened. This was unforeseen when we set the rules. What does that mean? And I think to use a very, very simple analogy, um, one of the best analogies for me for the interplay between rules and precedents, um, which are a bit like legal Lego, they're the things that you build the law out of, um, is something I like to call the bedtime rule. So you think about children, and you think about the importance of setting a regular bedtime. Say it's eight o'clock for you every night, that's, that's bedtime. But grandma comes to visit one week, and grandma's not gonna get in till late. So you say for this week, because grandma's not gonna get in till nine o'clock, you can stay up all the way till nine o'clock, so you can say hello to grandma. And you're doing this because you know they're gonna wake up once grandma gets here anyway. And, um, but that's a special circumstance. You can stay up to nine o'clock this week. Now what you're then doing is creating a precedent. And the precedent then becomes argumentative later on because you say, well, I want to start tonight to nine o'clock because last week you said I could. No, the rule, the precedent that we set there was it was only because grandma was here. Okay, 
well, I've got another argument that this is another special circumstance. It's not that grandma's here, um, but Uncle Frank's coming, and um, therefore I'm applying the precedent that I can stay up till nine o'clock because, you know, Uncle Frank's here and it's the same as grandma. No, that's not the same thing. Uncle Frank's a bad influence. We don't want you waiting up to see Uncle Frank. We don't like Uncle Frank and we're going to send him off as soon as possible. So that's not an application of that rule. Okay. So you can see how the advantage of rules is they're quite certain. You can say it's, it's eight o'clock every night. That's it. But, but you sometimes need flexibility and that's where precedents come into play where you say, okay, let's, let's set a precedent to, to, to look at the situations where the, 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 the basic rule doesn't apply. And often the basic rules, we often express them with those um, sort of, that development of precedent in mind. So very rarely in law would we say bedtime is always eight o'clock. What we usually say is something like bedtime is eight o'clock or whatever is reasonable under the circumstances. We always put that little bit of wiggle room in when we design laws. Uh, and then it becomes a matter of being able to lodge arguments and you look at the whole series of precedents over time and you say, okay, these are the reasons why you have been allowed to stay up till nine o'clock. These are the reasons that have not been allowed. Which of these does this new situation fit into? So it's a very, very simple situation, but I think it's very important uh, right at the very beginning to understand why you're reading uh, the things that you're reading and what the interplay between them. And I'll do a separate video on the reading skills and some tips on being able to, um, to read those different authorities. But the main thing I want you to start thinking about is that the, the way these things interlock together, the way the forward-looking, very general rules that we lay out also rely on the very specific, very backward-looking precedents in order to make the whole system work.